Hey guys, it's Steve from Featherlight, and this week we are checking out the brand new Yamaha YC61. That's the organ kind of focused keyboard from Yamaha that just debuted this year at the NAMM show. It is an incredibly powerful product, and if you're checking this video out, there's a pretty good bet you're also checking out the Nord Electro series as well. And if that's the case, and you think you've seen all this instrument has to offer, think twice, because there's a couple of hidden features that make this thing a really serious contender. Let's dive in and check it out. And it looks like as far as packaging, there really is just two things. Uh, a printed manual, which is very nice, especially for quick reference. And that's kind of unusual to see nowadays. And, and a power cable, AC power cable. So the board comes packaged in a heavy plastic durable liner. And these are really stout. So it would take quite a bit of jostling around to really affect this for sure. So as you can see, this is an extremely compact board and really the first thing you notice about it is probably the build quality. It is just absolutely gorgeous. It's a solid aluminum frame all the way around, including the end caps and the end of the board itself, the bottom down to the feet. Really this thing just screams quality construction. It is surprisingly high quality and incredibly lightweight. This is absolutely portable in every possible sense. Uh, the board feels actually remarkably good. Uh, nice and solid feeling. One of the hardest things to determine when you're actually shopping for keyboards online is the feel of the keyboard itself. What does the board actually feel like? This is an unusual board in the sense that it's a semi-weighted keyboard and it doesn't have a fully weighted action like some of the other CP series from Yamaha. And one of the things I was concerned about was that the action wouldn't be substantial enough to play other sounds besides organ. So these keys are waterfall keys, which means they don't have the lip on the outside of the keys like a piano keyboard does. And this makes doing things like sliding and raking for organ sounds so much easier. The thing I was concerned about was playing piano and other sounds besides organ. And this is a pleasant surprise. The keys feel substantial. And the keyboard itself is surprisingly quiet. It feels like there's some rubber or felt in the bed. And so as you hit the keys and dig into it and land, it feels like there's something to land on. The landing is pretty substantial. And it's remarkably quiet. Here's an example of what the keys sound like by themselves. Remarkably quiet for a synth action board. The YC61 comes with a full complement of back panel I.O., so including our input and output audio outs. We also have five pin DIN MIDI, and this allows us to connect up to other keyboards, for example, or to have the YC control other keyboards. In addition to that, we've got a variety of assignable Foot switches, sustain pedal for a piano style keyboard, an assignable, this would be an expression pedal for example, and then we have two more assignable foot controllers. In addition to that, we have an input section. This is an audio input section with its own gain knob. This is a big deal and it's really important. Because the fact that they're on standard quarter inch jacks, that means you could stack keyboards on top of one another, take the output of that keyboard, plug it into here, and have all of that be pre-mixed to our one set of outputs. That's a huge time saver, and it means we don't have to carry around a mixer or other apparatus to have a pretty compact keyboard rig, even with multiple keyboards. The YC61 control panel is divided up into five basic sections. So on the left-hand side, we've got our control section, which is our pitch bend and our modulation lever, as well as the master volume for the keyboard itself. Next to that is our relevant organ controls, including the drawbar section. And these are vast and many. In the center, we've got our LCD panel and our edit and live set save and recall section. Next to that, we've got our keyboard sections, both A and B that can be used simultaneously and the effects that pertain to them. And then finally, we have our effects section, which includes a master effects section. And we will definitely talk more about that shortly. 
First up on the keyboard on the upper left-hand side is the modulation and pitch bend controls. And these are a really nice and surprising change. The pitch bend and modulation levers are metal, and they've got a nice damped feel to them and a fair bit of resistance for the spring itself. And that's really nice in that they won't be easily changed or moved. And when mapping, for example, a control, if you have a layered sound, for example, So in this case, we're using the mod lever to bring in a layered sound. We've mapped our second layer to the mod wheel. Moving on to the organ section, the first thing that you see directly under the master volume slider is the rotary speaker and the speed indicator as well. So this allows you to stop the rotor in its position, current position, and not move throughout the stereo field, which is really nice for kind of a vintage recreation of a Leslie cab. You've got your slow and fast Leslie controls here for the horn and the rotor independently. All of those can be changed dramatically. And then you've got the lower and upper drawbar control sections for the organ itself. You've got the volume of the overall patch. And then you've got a host of organ-specific controls that are really just a joy to work with. But before we even talk about those, the very first thing you notice is the drawbar selection. These are amazingly good quality. Surprising, in fact. There's a good bit of resistance on the drawbar sections themselves, and there is a click indent indicator for each one of the drawbar positions, much like on a real Hammond. So that feels really good. That's great feedback while you're playing because there's a definite spot where each one of the positions fall, as opposed to some of the rolling keyboards, for example, that have sliders but the problem with the sliders is they're incredibly easy to move. These are not at all. They're really good quality. They've got a great bit of resistance to them. They're well damped, and they're really just a joy to work with, in addition to having the lighted indicator for the LEDs here for each one of the positions. And those positions can be different colors. So, for example, if you change patches, you can have one set of organs be one color LED, and there's a whole host of colors to choose from. Or you can have all your rock organs red and all your jazz organs be blue or green or whatever. You get the idea, but there's a ton of different color options to choose from. And this is this ended up being a really handy feature, much more handy than I thought that would be. So kudos to Yamaha for really getting a great design. These really feel good to play. And in addition, you'll notice that when you select organ drawbar positions, when you change a patch, for example, you are shown in the LED itself, much like on the Nords, where the original drop bar positions were to create that patch. And this is really handy for visual indication of where the positions of the draw bar should be. And then when you go to alter the draw bar, you can change this state, meaning if you move the draw bar, whether or not it takes over where the current position is and simply adds to it, or it resets the slider and then you start from scratch. So you have complete control over that. Directly under the organ type controller button, you've got this section here, which allows you to change the lower and upper draw bars and the split positions of it, including the volume of the entire patch itself. The on and off button for the entire section just completely disables it, turns it off. And then you've also got a couple of things here that are really handy. You've got octave sections for the organ itself that at a glance, you can instantly raise the octave. And it just toggles up and down. And you also have a pre-drive section, which adds a bit of gain before it enters the overdrive section and the speaker amp section, which allows a ton of control over the kind of sounds you're trying to get. So, for example, if we choose something that's got a little bit of a rock sound to it. It really warms up the sound really, really nice and gives you a lot more tonal options than you would normally with just a regular overdrive section at the end of the signal chain. Over here, you've got a vibrato and chorus sections, and a bunch of different ones can be chosen. We've got vibrato and chorus that show up on these two LEDs here, and we've got one of three choices, and we can turn the sections on and off completely. Under the percussion section, you can turn the entire section off.
And then, of course, we've got a couple different kinds to choose from. We've got the second or the third harmonic. And then we can also determine the decay of it as well. It can be slower so that you hear a little bit of the percussion decay die off a little slower. And that dies off much faster. And then we've got normal and soft to choose from as well. We've got an organ modeling knob selector right here. And this gives us one of six choices to choose from. So by scrolling through each one of these selections, we can scroll through the six different kinds of modeling engines that are used to create the organ sounds. So for example, H1 is a great uh, faithful reproduction of a standard vintage organ, and it's great for solos and music in which the organ's the main instrument. It's got a nice full range sound to it. <laughs> So H2 is a much deeper sound. It emphasizes a lot of the low and mid-range tone, so it's great when you want to have an edge or cut through a band, for example. This is great for overdriving. The pre-drive and the overdrive sections both work great for this style of organ. And then... H3, this is the last of the VCM style organ models to choose from. This has got a real percussive sound and it works great for drive effects. So if you're playing fast stuff. And then the F choices are some of the transistor style ones, for example, like British transistor and Italian transistor or the simple sine wave ones. Moving on to the center panel here, this is where we're going to make all of the control changes for the board as well as storing our live set. So we've got an LCD panel that tells us what we're looking at at the moment, as well as a rotary indicator, and this allows us to make all of our data and selections here. The wheel also, by hitting it, is the enter button. So everything can be done in one area, and it can be done with one hand, which is a lot handier when you're playing live and want to change or store something on the fly. The exit button just returns back to the screen itself. So what we're looking at right here is our eight live set buttons. And this set of eight buttons, we have 20 total pages of eight buttons in which to store them. We also have a couple of quick access buttons here that get us to the most commonly used parameters, especially live. So we can tune, pressing the button again takes us back to our live set page indicator. Touch allows us on the fly to change the velocity response of the keyboard as a whole. The menu section takes us into the general control panels, all of our file loading and firmware versions right here. Here we've got access to other settings, for example, like board transpose. We can set the split point on the fly. We can also store patches for our live set right here. And then the page indicators simply walk us through all of that. Next up is the keys A and B sound engines. And these give us two completely independent sound engines separate from the organ. And they can all be used together. And each one of the engines can draw voices from any of the four categories shown over here by this red rocker switch. Each one of the engines can be turned on or off simply by hitting these two little momentary switches, either A or B, and that shuts the engine off and turns it back on again. There is a ton of really impressive sounds to choose from in each one of the keys A and B libraries, many of them taken from the CP series pianos as well as the motif library of sounds, which means you don't need to decide what to leave out. For example, if you're trying to fill up your sample space in a Nord keyboard, you already have a ton of great sounds to choose from on board in memory to start with, including some samples that already come pre-layered like piano and strings and piano and synth if you don't feel like building those layers yourself. So one of the nicest things to discover about this layout and the design, aside from having that huge library of sounds to choose from for both of the engines, is building layers and splits couldn't be easier on this board. It's a real joy to have something that's intuitive. So for example, if we have, say we have the CFX uh, here on our first layer, and we engage the second engine, now we've got slow strings on it as well. We can certainly just adjust the level of the strings right there on the fly. Maybe we don't want to use that particular knob to do it, or we want to save that knob because we want to assign it to something else. 
Assigning it to another function couldn't be easier. So for example, if we hit the settings button and then we scroll down to controllers, hit enter and scroll down to modulation lever. So that's our mod wheel. We hit assign and simply move that knob. And now our strings are gonna be controlled by our modulation lever. All we have to do is move them up like we showed at the beginning of the video. And that brings in our strings now. So any controller or any knob can be assigned a function. The same is true for assigning splits. From here, from our control panel, we simply hit the quick button for split point, And from there, we simply choose any key we want for our split point. Looking closely at our LCD, setting up splits couldn't be easier. The split button down here, after we've already determined our split point, simply determines where on the board each one of our two sounds is gonna play. We're currently working on keyboard A, that's A's engine, and that shows us whether it's gonna play the top or the bottom or all of the board. Currently, it's gonna play all, as you can see the indicators there. We hit it one more time, that tells us it's only gonna play on the bottom, and the other time it's only gonna play on the top of the split point. And then when we choose B, which is currently our fretless bass sound, which we can see in the menu there, same thing applies. Rounding out the audio engines sections, we have the effects for each one of the audio engines that are specific to the voices themselves. So this is separate from the effects section of the board, which largely affects the organ and some other things, but can also be added to these voices. Currently, the effect that's assigned to this area here for the top voice, which is RCFX, is damper resonance. So add a little bit of that. Let's see what that sounds like by changing this depth knob. So we can add or subtract that amount of damper resonance and affect the depth of it. And on our base for our B audio engine, which is currently our fretless bass sound down here, it's completely dry, so let's engage that engine. And this is a hall reverb, so let's add a little bit of that just to give that bass a little life. And the last section on the board is our effects section. These are vast and powerful and uh, way more than we could go into on one quick look at the board, but this will give you a broad overview of what it's capable of. The first segment in here is the effects section. You can choose which of the audio engines it's gonna work on, whether it's the organ or the key A or B. So in addition to all the parameters there are for each one of the effects, there's even a looper delay in here that allows you to do complex repeating loop-based patterns as well. So a ton of stuff to choose from here. The second section is gonna be our speaker and amp combination. We can choose to affect either organ, key A or B, and then we've got a bunch of different ones to choose from. Lead, crunch, doubles, cases, all kinds of speaker and amp combinations to play with here, including our rotary controls. And our rotary controls can be dramatically different and can really change the sound of stuff depending on what it's on. So we engage the rotary and it's on rotary A, can change the tone of rotary A. And rotary B can change the sound dramatically. The last and final segment is the reverb segment, and that controls the entire board if you want it to. For example, right now all the LEDs are lit. By simply pressing that little send button, we can send only the organ to the reverb, or key engine A, key engine B, or the entire board. The last segment in the effects section is by far and away the most misunderstood feature of this keyboard, and one of the things that sets it apart from every other keyboard in its class, including the Nord Electro series. And this is the YC61's master EQ section with the sweepable mid-range frequency. This allows you to tailor the global output sound of the keyboard to match almost any other keyboard easily. So you have a huge amount of control over the tone of the instrument. We were easily able to match the sound of our Electro 3 and all the organ sounds on board simply by changing the overall frequency. This changes it from the radio-ready produced sound that Yamaha is so famous for to a more appropriate live performance tone where you really need the punch in the low mids.
Now let's engage the master EQ section and adjust the main volume for any difference in gain. And next with a gospel organ part, first without the EQ section engaged. And now with the EQ section engaged. And here with a hard Wurlitzer sound with the EQ section off. And now with the EQ section on and the master volume adjusted. And here with a nice Rhodes straight from the library. And again with the master EQ section switched on. This can be a huge help when you're trying to beef up sounds that were historically thin to start with, like the clavinet D6. Here with the EQ section off. And here with the volume adjusted and the EQ section on. The difference can even be more important when you're playing live with something like a rock organ sound where you need all that power and guts. First with the EQ off. And now with the volume adjusted and the EQ section on. And something that the Nord Electro series isn't capable of doing, the addition of pitch bend and mod wheel levers make playing synth sounds and synth leads especially possible. And with the YC61's onboard multifunction controls, playing big synth sounds is a lot more fun and satisfying. With so many amazing features that we could never have time to cover in one review, one of the last things we're going to talk about is the most impressive feature of all, and that's the amazing way the YC61 interfaces with your iOS devices and your favorite applications in a way you would never expect. So we're going to start by using Apple's camera connection kit, and that's USB on one side and then a lightning connector on the other side. If you have a newer iPad that uses USB-C, then you'd be going from USB-A and B to USB-C. That simply plugs into a regular USB cable and one end of it plugs into the two host connector right here on the YC in the back. And the other end of it is gonna to go to our iPad. Apple also makes a different version of the camera connection kit that allows you to charge your iPad at the same time you're using USB. Either one works great. 
now we've got our older iPad Air set up in front of the YC61. And we plug in our camera connection kit from Apple just into the lightning port. If you have a USB-C newer model, you'll simply plug that in directly to your USB-A or B connection right out of the back. And then we're going to start up an iOS app called Module from Korg. And this is effectively just a sound module in software. And now we're going to turn all the engines of the board off completely. And we are effectively playing the sound module inside of our iOS app now. So the only audio you're hearing isn't even coming in the audio input like we showed you for the I.O. section. This is actually going into the audio interface that's built into the YC61. So this keyboard has its own fully fledged audio interface built right into the keyboard. And it's going out our iPad into the audio interface. And all of that audio from our iPad shows up right here, pre-mixed into our master volume. So when I play the iOS sound and I adjust the volume on the keyboard, the volume of the iOS app goes up and down. This is unbelievably cool because it allows you to use your iOS apps as backup sound modules or as layered sound modules, all without having to have any of the modules turned on on the YC61. So if you wanted to just use it as a controller, you can do that here as well. So for those of you that use MainStage, for example, or any of the apps from Apple, and you want to build complex setups based on both your iPad and the YC's sounds itself, the opportunities are absolutely phenomenal. So it's as simple as turning on one of the engines inside the YC. And all of that sound is pre-mixed in the audio interface that's built right here inside the YC61, and it all comes out neat and tidy on the master volume knob. That couldn't be a more complete and simple and straightforward setup, and just opens up a huge palette of sound possibilities with just an iPad and this keyboard by itself. So there's a brief look at the brand new YC61 organ-oriented keyboard from Yamaha. From its vast motif library, which has so many sounds that it almost negates the need to load in your own sample set, to the incredible integration with iOS devices and apps and things like MainStage and GarageBand and all of the different audio apps that are out there, and have it all show up right here at the volume knob of the YC61 because of its included audio interface, makes this thing a real powerhouse and a definite contender if you're looking for a keyboard of this variety. Hey, if you learned something or if this was helpful in any way, please hit the subscribe and notification bells. And remember to stay safe. We'll see you guys in the next video.